um, we're talking, uh, this is Mani and Felici, we're talking about Unit 11, um, and we're talking about the things that are on the whiteboard, or the blackboard there, namely first person commands, second and third person commands, and how they work in Greek. Because as I mentioned, I think, in the first video, we have second and third person forms for commands imperatives, and then in the first person, what we do is we use the horatory subjunctive. We just want to make clear that that's the rule, okay? The horatory subjunctive, to remind you, is uh, subjunctive. That's a main verb of the sentence, mm -hmm. and um, it can be either present or, or aorist subjunctive, depending on what you want to use, and it's, it's uh, first person singular or plural, okay? But us do it, let me do it. It's the way to translate it. Um, so that takes the place of a, of a first person imperative, okay? In Greek. Um, there are a couple of other little details about how imperatives work that we're discussing here. One of them is this use of small particles. There's age, or agede. Age looks like and is probably mm -hmm. then the old only imperative of the verb ago which means do so it was a way of making an imperative do it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you then you had the verb okay but it's been demoted and this happened very, very at a very early stage in languages um, to being just a combination of particles that you put with the particle de, de is just a strengthened form of the particle de. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just a, a, a more emphatic form of agia to signal that the next word is an imperative. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just like the Spanish thing of putting the upside down exclamation point mm -hmm. in front of a sentence, right? Uh, um, same kind of idea. Um, Belisi, why don't you talk about two commands in one sentence and how that works? <laughs> Um, basically, when sometimes when you have a string of commands, more yeah. than two, mm -hmm. two or more rather, um, you can put some of them in participles, especially the first ones uh -huh. physically in the sentence, right? right? So you can have a participle and then uh, something in the imperative, and you can translate them both as co a command, like right. sit down and do this kind of thing. Okay. And a participle is going to be a nominative participle and agreeing with the Supposed subject of the imperative, which is second person singular or third person singular, or second person plural or third person plural, both mm -hmm. going to be nominative. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's a really, you know, it's a beautiful thing to do with a bunch of imperative, but you can mm -hmm. do it with other things too. Lots of mm -hmm. Greek sentences start with a participle like that in the nominative, as the book has been giving you mostly participles like that. Mm -hmm. Not all Greek sentences use participles that way, but lots of them do. Mm -hmm. But that's a really common way of doing multiple commands. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last thing is, what happens in Greek with when you want to negate commands? When you t want to tell somebody, as people often do, don't do that. <laughs> right? Um, in Greek, the the maybe you remember that we've learned a long time ago a way of doing this. In the in the lesson on the horatory subjunctive, we also learned the prohibitive subjunctive, which you use in the aorist only. Okay, and the second person singular and plural. So you do me and the aorist subjunctive of the second person singular and plural when you want to negate a command in the aorist. Okay, um, you can also use the third person singular or plural for a negative command. Don't let him let him not do it, like in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not. Yes. Well, no, not second person. Mm -hmm. All right, but anyway, you can do commands in Greek and you do it also in Latin. In a third person, okay, about twelve tables in Latin are all third person commands. <laughs> Let him not do that. <laughs> That's the way it works. So it's a kind of formalization. But anyhow, um, so so when it comes to aorist negative commands, you use the subjunctive, okay, um, and you can use the horatory subjunctive for the first person. So you have a complete paradigm, effectively, of aorist subjunctive first, second, and third persons, singular and plural for negative commands. In the singular, however, you use the, the hortatory subjunctive with may, okay, for the first person singular, but the regular imperative forms that we just talked about mm -hmm. with may in the singular for the second and the third person. So so everything is, um, is if you will, in the way of negative commands, everything is may in the subjunctive except for uh, the second and third person singular, okay? Um, and 
So you have an opposition between present and aorist forms, and the aorist forms are also junctive. The present is a mix of present subjunctive and present imperative, so-called present imperatives. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. That's it.